Welcome to a lesson on determining the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of a rational function. A rational function is a function that can be described as a quotient of two polynomials where q of x is not the zero polynomial, where the domain of the rational function would be all the values of x that don't make q of x or the denominator equal to zero. Here's an example of a rational function where the numerator is the polynomial x squared minus four and the denominator is the polynomial x squared minus two x minus three. And it's often helpful to express a rational function in factored form as we see here. Let's take a look at the graph of this function. So the one thing we should notice right away is that this graph has two vertical asymptotes, here at x equals negative one and here at x equals three. Vertical asymptotes are lines that the graph approaches but never touches. And this graph also has a horizontal asymptote of y equals one and a horizontal asymptote is a line that a graph approaches, but it may also cross it as we see here. One last thing to notice about the domain of this function is, since x equals negative one and x equals three would make the denominator equal to zero, we must exclude those two values from the domain. Let's take a look at how we're gonna determine the equations of the vertical asymptotes. The line x equals a is a vertical asymptote of the graph of the function if a is a zero of the denominator and does not come from a common factor with the numerator. Zeros of the denominator that are also zeros of the numerator result in a hole in the graph, not a vertical asymptote. So for example, if we take a look at this function here, the first thing we wanna do is factor both the numerator and denominator so we'd have x plus three times x minus three, and the denominator would be the factors of positive six that add to negative five, we'd have x minus two and x minus three. Notice there are two values that make the denominator equal to zero. The domain of this function would have to exclude x equals two and x equals three, but these both do not result in vertical asymptotes. Since the zero x equals three is also a zero of the numerator, there's a hole at x equals three, not a vertical asymptote. However, x equals two is a zero of the denominator, but not of the numerator, and therefore there is a vertical asymptote at x equals two. And if x equals a is a vertical asymptote, as x approaches the value of a, f of x or y approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity, meaning the graph will go up indefinitely or down indefinitely as it approaches a vertical asymptote. Now let's talk about horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes are horizontal lines that the graph approaches as x approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity. So for horizontal asymptotes, we're gonna see how the function behaves as x increases or decreases without bound. One way to help us determine the horizontal asymptotes is to think as the numerator and denominators racing to infinity, if we can determine whether the numerator or denominator wins, will help us determine the equation of the horizontal asymptote. What I mean by that is, if the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator, as we see here in this first function, there will not be a horizontal asymptote. The reason there isn't one is because the degree of the numerator is three and the degree of the denominator is equal to one. So as x approaches positive infinity, the numerator is increasing faster and therefore the function value increases without bound. And we can illustrate this pretty quickly with a graphing calculator. I've already typed the function into y1. If we go to our table and, and then using the table feature, we can see that as x increases, y increases without bound. Here's an illustration of why there's no horizontal asymptote. We can also look at this graphically. If we press the graph key, you can see as we move right along the graph, the graph moves up indefinitely, or if we move left, it moves down indefinitely. Therefore, there's no horizontal asymptote. If the degree of the numerator and denominator are equal, the horizontal asymptote will be the ratio of the leading coefficients. So looking at our second example here, our numerator and denominator have degree one, 
and the ratio of the leading coefficients would be two over one, therefore the equation of the horizontal asymptote is y equals two. Let's take a look at this on the graphing calculator. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off y one and turn on y two. Let's go to our table and notice that as x increases, we can see that the y value is approaching the value of positive two. And we can also take a look at the graph and see that as we move to the right, or as x approaches positive infinity, the y value is approaching positive two. And if we approach negative infinity, you can see we'd be approaching positive two as well. And then lastly, if the degree of the denominator is higher than the degree of the numerator, the horizontal asymptote will be y equals zero. So the numerator here has degree zero, the degree of the denominator is degree one. As x increases without bound, the numerator stays at two, the denominator increases without bound, therefore the function value is approaching zero, so y equals zero is our horizontal asymptote. Let's go back to the calculator one more time. Let's go ahead and turn off y two and turn on y three. Let's look at the table first. As x increases without bound, we can see the y values are quickly approaching zero. We can see as x approaches positive infinity to the right, the function values approach zero. And they do the same if we approach negative infinity to the left. Let's go and take a look at our examples now. Here we want to determine the vertical and horizontal asymptotes and then graph the function. Notice the numerator and denominator cannot be factored. So for the vertical asymptote, if we set x plus one equal to zero, we would have x equals negative one is a vertical asymptote. Let's go ahead and sketch that. And then for the horizontal asymptote, the degree of the numerator is zero, the degree of the denominator is one, therefore a horizontal asymptote would be y equals zero. Or again, you can think of what happens to the function value as x increases without bound. Our numerator stays at four, our denominator gets larger and larger, so the function values would approach zero. Now these asymptotes make it a lot easier to graph this rational function because we know the pieces of the graph will approach these lines. So let's go ahead and determine a couple of points on this function, and then we should be able to make a nice graph of the function. And we're gonna pick values that are close to the vertical asymptote. So we'll select x equals zero and x equals one to the right of the vertical asymptote, and then we'll select x equals negative two and x equals negative three. Well, when x is zero, we'd have four divided by one, that's four. When x is one, we'll have four divided by one plus one, that'll be two. When x is negative two, we'll have four divided by negative one, that'll be negative four. And then when x is negative three, we'll have four divided by negative two. Let's go ahead and plot these four points. Zero, four, one, two, negative two, negative four, and negative three, negative two. Notice without these vertical asymptotes, we probably couldn't make a nice graph, but since we do know the function approaches these lines, we can make a pretty good graph with just these four points. It would look something like this. And here's the graph done on some software. Let's take a look at another example. The first step is to factor both the numerator and denominator. x squared would be x times x, and the denominator also has a common factor of x. So even though zero and two are zeros of the denominator, they both do not result in vertical asymptotes. Because x equals zero is also a zero of the numerator, there's a hole at x equals zero, and there would be a vertical asymptote at x equals two. And then for the horizontal asymptote, 
since the degree of the denominator is equal to two, and so is the degree of the numerator, the horizontal asymptote would be the ratio of the leading coefficients, or the horizontal asymptote would be y equals one. Let's go ahead and sketch our two asymptotes. We have x equals two, and we have y equals one. Let's go ahead and select a couple of values of x and then determine y. Let's go ahead and select x equals three and x equals one. F of three would be nine divided by nine minus six. That would give us three. When x is equal to one, we'd have one divided by one minus two. That's gonna give us negative one. So we have the point three, three, and then we have the point one, negative one. And so even though we have two points, we know the graph is going to approach these asymptotes. So we could sketch something like this, like this, and this piece would be approaching these asymptotes. The only thing you have to be careful about is there's supposed to be a hole at x equals zero. So what we should do is go over to our graph at x equals zero and make sure we have a hole there. And looking at some software, the graph would look like this. I hope you found this helpful.